Welcome back to Unapologetically Queer, my lovely queers out here. If you come across this video and don't let me say this again, and you feel like you can connect with me, <clears throat> you know, I'm just going to do what I did before. I'm going to give you five seconds for you to, you know, subscribe. You subscribed. Did you hit the red button? <laughs> so today's video is going to be about how I knew I was queer. Okay, my first exchange with a guy or a boy. Let's see what happens. Let's get to it. So I was in third grade when this first happened, this first encounter with a boy. And I didn't know anything about that. And I was just like, oop. I was like, this is new. But this boy is kind of cute. So it was a boy in third grade. And, you know, I don't remember much because I was young. So the boy and I, we would um, meet up after class. So whenever we would go to lunch or we would go just outside of the classroom, we would wait for everyone to leave. And we would always be the last ones in the line. <laughs> and it's so funny because I think we were paired up in like partners so that way we would be like be accountable of taking care of each other and he just happened to be my partner so what we did was we would stay in the classroom for like five seconds to turn off the lights we would turn off the lights we would kiss inside the room and then outside we would like kiss a little bit and I don't know if they never found out I don't know what they did with that situation. I can't remember anything about it, and I can't remember them telling me, like, no, you can't do that. Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. The teacher, the teacher should have been a little more, you know, you know, she should have noticed a little bit more because you got your two boys kissing. I mean, which is perfectly fine, but at that time, it was before I knew anything. It was before... I knew it was good and was bad. All I know is that something felt good to me, to me and to Minnie Me. <laughs> Minnie Me was happy. I was happy too. Okay. <clears throat> me and that boy made out every single day, every day, and I do not regret any bit of it. Okay, because that was my first experience, and it was just really nice. It was nice. Until this day, I wonder, like, where is this boy at? Like. Obviously, he's just as grown as I am, but I'm like, I wonder if he turned out being himself, if he is queer, or if he isn't, or if he's living a secret life, you know, like, living those secret lives to protect yourself from society's pressures, that's a big thing, but I'm just like, sis, if you out, I'm happy for you, because if I can reunite with you and we can recreate third grade all over again I will do it okay so that was my first encounter with a boy so in my second encounter not really an encounter but my second crush was around I want to say late elementary school no actually no I'll take that back it was like in the middle I was like fifth no that's late elementary school wow Franklin there was this one boy. He seeked a lot of attention. You know there's those boys that, or even girls, whatever, they seek a lot of attention from people. And they act, they want to act like they all fierce and they, you know, I'm going to beat you up, blah, 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 blah. My mom had a problem because he kept pushing me around, pushing me around. And this whole time, and this was at a part of my life where I had, like, shoved that away and I hadn't talked about it much. And I just, you know, I just believed that I needed to be with a girl. So... At that point, I um, felt kind of crush, a crush for this boy, and I felt crush for the, some other boy that was my 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 mom's friend's um, little boy, and he's around the same age as I am. And I was just like, if I could just recreate third grade with you, I would, because it was just so nice. Like that's how you know you a real gay one, okay? That's how you know when you get the feelings, when you get those. Um, Butterflies, that's how you freaking know. So no one can tell me that it's a freaking choice because the hell I don't choose to be oppressed. But moving on. Um, but yeah, those were the two moments in which I was like, damn. Damn, I, I'm feeling this thing and I don't know what I'm feeling. And I do not take it back a single second. So apart from that, then I went through this whole phase of 
I have to be heterosexual. I am heterosexual because my mom has expectations for me. My parents have expectations, values for me, how I should portray and carry myself in society as a man. Bullshit. Bullshit, okay? Because I ended up having a girlfriend, okay? She was my girlfriend and I made out with her and it was not as intense as it was with that with the boy. It was not that good at all. No. And I don't know, it just wasn't, a, it was more forced. I felt that I was being forced to do something. I was forcing myself in a position where I had to find a connection with a girl because it was a must for me being a, a boy, you know? And the same thing happened with the second girlfriend. And I had the first girlfriend because I moved a lot. I moved three times and I went to three different elementary schools. And the first girlfriend was in the first elementary school, and I didn't have any connection. I have no recollection of her whatsoever. The second girl, I had a relationship with her, relationship, and we made out, kiss, because we were younger, just to be more censored, not really, I don't give a damn. But yeah, we made out, we did whatever, and then I met her again, we met up again in middle school, and she denied me because homeboy had gained weight and she acted like she ain't know me but I don't care because at the end of the day you know I like I like me some sausage okay so <laughs> I'm sorry for being so explicit it's just so funny to me it's just so hilarious but I've dabbled here and there with some, with some guys now that I'm older and I definitely know what I like and I know what I like to do but that was pretty much a nice little quick video it wasn't too in depth it was just a nice little summary of my life being queer, what I did when I was younger and stuff like that, but I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to continue with me in Unapologetically Queer, go ahead and subscribe, go ahead and like this video and comment down below, let me know what you want to see sis, because if you don't tell me, I won't know what to do for you, you need to let me know, because if you let me know, guess what happens, come closer, a little bit closer, I can make more videos for you, videos you like. But yes, I want to create a series where I have like all the acronyms of the LGBTQ plus and interview someone within each identity and they tell me a struggle of being in their identity or their identity formation. So if that sounds interesting, let me know down below. I also want to do another series called Queer Horror Stories where people tell me all their horror stories or email me their horror stories about them being queer and th things they've gone through within the community and within their identity formation, dating, etc. It's gonna get juicy up in here, okay? We're gonna be a juicy, juicy. We're gonna be some juicy hoes up in here, okay? Okay? My goodies. My. <laughs> but yes, please go ahead and comment and subscribe and like this video. Go ahead and share it, etc. Go ahead and do whatever you feel would help me grow on this channel. But have a good one and I'll see y'all in another video. And remember, stay unapologetically queer, boom.